Hi guys, welcome back to our MCQ sessions. These MCQs are designed to make your concepts better. These help you to revise whatever chapters we all have done. They help you to get a detailed explanation of why this is the answer and why others are not the answer. Something that is not there in the module. We are trying to cover every possible MCQ from the module first. Once that thing is done, then we are going to be covering all the board of studies MCQs also. All the MCQs of all the chapters are neatly arranged on our YouTube channel playlist form. So in case you want to be seeing anything, go to the playlist section and try to search the chapter that you all want. Chapter number one to chapter number 13, everything is all arranged in a perfect manner. Uh, and do consider joining our telegram group and our telegram channel the details of which will be there in the description in case you wish to be enrolling for a complete course then the link is there in the description once you click on that you enroll into that the lectures will automatically start there will be no need for you all to be calling us also lectures will automatically start all the lectures do come with unlimited views and very high validity so therefore all those are not the problems but one advice from my side the moment you clear your ca inter and you start with ca final do ensure that you are giving your self-paced papers at the earliest time possible so therefore you can concentrate all your efforts on the remaining six papers we are on to chapter number four specialized cost management techniques let's do the question for the day which of the following techniques is not relevant to target costing? Now, before I start this, target costing. For a small example, I have thought like, you know, I want to be launching, say, a specific kind of a calculator in the market. But the market for calculators is, say, very price sensitive. So I try to be thinking a, ca a Casio Calci like this costs around 400 rupees. If I can manage to launch a calculator, say at 150 rupees, I try to be thinking it will have huge amount of demand. The currently, uh, currently whatever calculators I produce, my cost is very high. I want to bring it say to 100 rupees. I want to make a calculator at 100 rupees, which I can sell at 150. So therefore you want to be reducing your cost from that level to 100 rupees. Now, this is kind of target costing whereby you know that I want to sell the product at this much price. I want this much amount of profit in middle. So therefore, this becomes my target cost. In my example, 100 rupees. If you can try to reduce the cost of the calculator by like, you know, whatever margin and bring it down to 100 rupees, we say your target cost is being met. But do remember that easier said than it is very difficult to be achieving such kind of goals because you'll have to compromise with many things you'll have to do lot amount of research how i can try to buy the parts cheaper which function i can try to eliminate from this so therefore my cost falls suppose for a small example uh some calculators have a button of gt okay this does not have gt button i try to be thinking like you know i do not want to be having the gt button that might reduce the cost to some extent then I try to be thinking like, you know, it runs on solar. If I'm going to be selling a calculator at 150 rupees only, let it run on battery. So therefore, I try to reduce lot amount of functionalities also because I want to be reducing my price. This is whatever is target cost. You'll have to be doing these things. It's not very easy. Example, when Ratan Tata thought long time ago that I want to be launching a nano car, he had followed target costing approach only, whereby he went on reducing the amount of features that were there in the present car. At that time, his present successful car was Tata Indica, but that costed around 1,90,000 to Ratan Tata, means to Tata Motors, to be honest. Okay. They had to be reducing the cost in a dramatic way. So therefore they change the plastic, they change the body from like, you know, a metal body to a plastic body. Apart from that amount of features that were there in uh, Indica were not there in Nano, so on and so forth. So the question, which of the following techniques is not relevant only to target costing? Okay. You all have value analysis. You all have variance analysis that you all have done in standard costing. Then the third one that you all have is functional analysis. Lastly, you have activity analysis. In case you all know the answer, this is a time to be commenting on it. Okay, so now before I try to be saying the answer, 
A, C and D are slightly related to each other. A, C and D. What do you mean by value analysis? Value analysis is, it is a set of techniques, knowledge and skills used to improve the value of the product by eliminating unnecessary cost or improving its functions without compromising the, qual the quality, reliability and performance. Now, <clears throat> for a small example, for a small example, think it of. A tube light, okay. Originally, we used to be having CFL tube lights. They had the chlorofluoro uh, gas in that, okay. When companies, they innovated and they converted that into LED tube lights. Did their cost increase? No. In fact, their cost fell down. Now, if you all know, like, you know, original, the CFL uh, tube lights had basically three parts. Which three parts? They had a metal frame first and then the tube light and there used to be a choke in middle. So, there were three parts. When LED tube lights are there now, they don't have any parts. It's a single unit made of plastic. Okay, you fit it, it directly starts. So, number of parts fell. Did quality fall? No. So, therefore, value analysis is basically like, you know, we try to be thinking what adds value, what does not add value. Try to remove all those things which do not add value. Choke does not add value. Metal frame does not add value. Okay. In a tube light, what I'll be doing, whether it is of plastic or of metal. Okay. So, value analysis is helpful in target costing. It helps you to reduce your cost. Variance analysis, I think everybody knows it is the difference between your standard cost and your actual cost. Okay, it's very simple. You all have done your standard costing also. Functional analysis, we try to be removing the features of a product which a user does not want or he might be okay to compromise with. Okay, so whenever a company tries to be thinking like, you know, that uh, let's try to reduce the cost. Example, say again of Tata Nano or something. Tata Indica, say, had lot amount of seat belts for the safety. I'm not saying this happened, but just an example. Say that when uh, Ratan Tata wanted to reduce the cost of Nano, he could have thought like, you know, why to be providing such high quality amount of seat belts? Okay, why to be doing that? Because in any case, the consumer is paying very less. And he had thought that demand will be coming in the smaller cities a lot, whereby speed of the car is naturally lesser because the roads are bad. Okay. So in that case, like, you know, he can be thinking, let's substitute, say, the seat belts, okay, from a heavy material to a lighter material that might help to reduce the cost. Okay. And in smaller cities, to be very honest, not many people wear the seat belt also. They all should wear, but they all do not. Okay. So therefore, trying to remove the unnecessary parts, which are not of much use. Okay. This is functional analysis, again, useful to reduce your cost. So therefore, part of target costing. Okay. And then D, activity analysis. It is used in activity-based costing to identify which activity should be carried out, which should not be. We usually try to be saying all activities that a company does are divided up into two parts. You have value-added and non-value-added. Companies should try to eliminate or reduce non-value-added activities. This analysis helps you to reduce your cost. Okay. So A, B, and C help you to reduce your cost and reach till the target level. Variance analysis is just a difference between standard cost and actual cost. It is not part of target costing. In fact, it is part of performance evaluation. Okay. So out of four, B is not related to target costing. That should be your answer. Yeah. So that should be the correct answer. I'll see you next time with another question. Take care till then. Bye.